guys, this is Miss Carson, your librarian. I wanted to continue today with our uh, First Chapter Fridays with our South Carolina Young, Ad Young Adult Book Awards. So the book that we're going to be looking at today is called Time Bomb by Joelle Charbonneau. Sorry if I butchered that last name. Um, this book is found in our uh, horror thriller section. So I'm going to read the front cover. There is um, just a short preface and then, of course, chapter one. <clears throat> a congressman's daughter, sick of her perfect image. A star quarterback with something to hide. A guy who's tired of his summer crush ignoring his calls. A clarinet player who is done trying to fit in or trying it all. An orphaned rebel who wants to teach someone a lesson. A guy who wants someone to see him, not his religion. Diana, Frankie, Tad, Cass, Z, and Rashad couldn't be more different. But before the morning's over, all six have one thing in common. They're trapped in a school that's been rocked by a bombing. When they hear on the radio that the bomber's still inside, they must decide whether they'll turn on one another or work together to get out alive. <clears throat> Told from multiple perspectives, this emotional thriller from the author of the heart-pounding testing trilogy keeps you guessing until the final pages. <clears throat> Who is the real culprit? And what sparked the time bomb that had been just waiting to go off? <clears throat> so I'm going to read uh, a quote that the author put in here. Um, by another author named George R.R. R. Martin, who you may um, recognize his name. He wrote the Game of Thrones series. So his quote says, Nobody is the villain in their own story. <clears throat> so the preface begins, 1.51 p.m. Don't fight, Cass said from the doorway that Frankie and Z had just disappeared through, tears glistening in her eyes. Can we just turn the radio back on? Maybe they'll tell us help is coming. Rashad clicks on the radio before heading over to help Tad. There was the buzz of static, then the announcer telling everyone that the firefighters were making progress. The fire was <clears throat> contained to the west side, and they hoped to have it out soon. With one person of interest being questioned, authorities are now working to find... Another individual they had confirmed is involved in this terrible bombing. A source confirms that the individual is one of the students trapped on the second floor in the school. With four bombs <clears throat> already gone off, this appears to be there appears to be one explosive device still inside the school that could detonate at any time. Another bomb was ready to go off and the bomber was one of them. <coughs> Earlier that day, 8.35 a.m., Diana, Chapter 1, all you had to do was smile and wear the right clothes and everyone would think you were special. If you appeared successful, people would automatically assume you were successful. Her parents believed that. Her father had built a career on it. They wanted her to believe it. Diana hated that she did. Perception is everything, Diana. Her stepmother said so often that Diana wanted to scream. But screaming wasn't presentable, and boy, did it make the wrong impression. This made, this made Diana scream, this made screaming at the top of her lungs very tempting. Always take care to make the right choice, Diana. Her stepmother said over and over again. Everything you do is important and reflects on your father and the positions he takes. And think about what your father's opponents would claim if you didn't do well in school or become a leader in the activities you're in. They'll wonder how serious your father is about education if his own daughter doesn't do well in school. The other side is always looking for a reason to point fingers <clears throat> and show your father isn't worthy of his position, that we aren't worthy. So you can't allow your grades or your attention to detail to slide. Or you'll hurt your father. Or worse, you'll make the work he's trying to do. You'll hurt the work he's trying to do. 
Diana looked down at the clothes she had chosen for that day. After 16 years, she knew exactly what details would be noticed and what people would think of when they saw her. Stylish white jeans, a tasteful pink top, but nothing too expensive because that made people jealous. Nothing too tight because that gave people a wrong idea. And no wrinkles. Wrinkles made people think you were lazy. No one trusts a person who is lazy. To get what you wanted in life, you must inspire trust, even if you intend to break it. Her father inspired trust with his perfectly tailored suits that were made less stuffy because he never wore a tie and always left his collar open. <clears throat> Folksy friendly. Everybody's idea of the perfect dad. And former army communication specialist who always put his family and country first. At least, that's what people must have thought because he got elected. He was working hard to make sure he got to keep his job for another term. And it was their family's job, Diana's job, to make sure she didn't do anything wrong that could make voters question whether they wanted him back in office. No pressure there. Catherine, she yelled, knowing how much her stepmother hated raised voices. No response. She must have already gone downstairs. Dad would be in meetings already. Diana bit her lip as she reached for the gold studs Catherine gave her for her 16th birthday, then added the gold cross necklace that had technically been from her father. <coughs> She'd pretended not to notice when one of his aides handed him the box that he'd clearly been unaware of up until that moment. Little touches make all the difference, Catherine insisted. People notice the details. Yes, they did. Diana thought as she reached into her jewelry box and pulled out the ratty friendship bracelet she'd made for herself years ago, wishing she had had someone to give it to and to give her one in return. No one ever assumed the popular girl needed to be given gifts. No one thought about whether the popular girl was lonely when she went home. Everyone assumed the popular girl had a million friends and a family who supported her. <coughs> Diana walked to her mirror and checked her makeup, just enough to make her blue eyes look bigger. Nothing more, or people might question whether she was a good girl. And she was supposed to be a good girl. She ticked off her stepmother's checklist one by one. Good shoes, a nice home, top grades, smart, respectable family tree, and perfect manners. All signs of a strong, well-brought-up girl. A girl everyone claims to know from school. One parent and teachers pointed to as an example to others. One who had been taught to calculate her appearance and demeanor down to the plain red color of her cell phone case. One who was determined to use it all to show everyone that it was foolish to trust what someone wanted you to see. Perfect. <coughs> and if she didn't want to ruin her perfect image, Diana would have to get moving. Tardiness was not acceptable for a girl who was supposed to be without flaws. Tardiness implied a lack of respect for pe other people's time. Glancing at her watch, she shook her head and hurried downstairs to find her stepmother so she could get a ride to school for the yearbook meeting. Catherine, she called. No answer. Hmm. Well, Catherine was probably in the backyard, making sure the staff had polished the patio furniture to a shine so that guests could be invited back to the house after the evening, after the event tonight. Catherine, your mother went out. What? She turned and spotted her father standing next to the porch swing with his cell phone pressed to his ear. Since there was no point in correcting him about, his, about Catherine's relationship to her, she simply asked, where? He put a hand up to quiet her. Yes, I'm here, and yes, I understand that there's been some pushback, but I can't step back from the bill or I'll get hammered. The press will smell blood and it'll be over. And we all know I'm right on this. I just need one thing to tip in my favor. <clears throat> you have to trust me on this. Diana started to speak again, but before she could get a word out, her father turned his back and nodded. She would have to get in line for his attention. Yes, I'll make the distinction tonight, and don't worry, the event will be the perfect place to highlight the positive points in the bill and to take charge of the conversation. 
If you have other things to, you want to talk about, I'll be in the office in a half hour. Good speaking with you too, Tim. I appreciate your dedication. We're going to turn things around. Finally, he hung up and turned towards her. He was... <clears throat> he was wearing perfectly pressed khakis and a red polo shirt under a deep blue sports coat. Relaxed authority was what her stepmother called the look. And despite the clothes, Diana didn't think her father appeared relaxed. That was Tim? Her father nodded. He was worried about the negative press my safety through education bill is getting. <clears throat> Tim hadn't been on his on her father's staff as long as the others, but he was smart and perceptive, which is why her father's chief of staff hired him right out of graduate school. And even though he was younger than the rest of the staff, Diana knew that Tim was right to be worried about her father's bill. The press was calling it an invasion of privacy. The law would require that students and teachers inform the administration if they thought someone in the school might be interested in doing harm to students, teachers, or school property. Any student reported will then have to hand over their passwords to social media and email accounts or face suspension and a potential investigation by federal authorities. Those who did not report suspicions before a harmful event would could be charged with aiding and abetting. Her father believed that the law would turn everything in the country around and would finally <clears throat> do what no other law had been able to do, make things safer. Any student interested in causing trouble would think twice about it if they knew their friends and teachers were watching them and ready to act on any suspicious behavior. And by catching and circumventing threatening behavior early, there was a good chance of diverting those students towards a more positive path. Her father was certain that taking action in the school and the education system was the best way of changing the escalating pattern of violence in the country. Was there another bad story in the press? Diana asked. Not everyone agreed with her father's thoughts on how to keep the country safe. Since the unveiling of the bill, there had been phone calls and mail and huge editorials about invasion of privacy and people's differing definitions of what a threat to society was. <clears throat> Diana had even gotten hate mail for her father's idea. When she tried to talk to her father about it, he just told her to give the mail to Tim and to ignore it. That everything would work out. But when Tim had sat with her and listened to her... I'll wait. Sorry. Mail truck seems to be in our neighborhood this morning. Okay. Um... But when Tim had sat with her and listened to her talk about the threats she had gotten and how people made a point of telling her they were going to vote her father out of office, Tim had admitted the backlash was concerning. <clears throat> if the tide of bad press and angry editorials about the potential law continued, they both agreed that it would be sunk before it ever had a chance to be tested. And her father's career, when she had been told was necessary to make the world better, would be sunk along with it. <clears throat> was it any wonder Tim wanted to pull out all the stops to make sure her father's event tonight got the press's attention or that she was willing to do whatever it took to help? It was nice to have someone finally realize that she was capable of helping and to finally listen to her when she had an idea. And Tim had said he was glad he could run ideas by someone without having to worry about her telling the senator that his ideas were too radical or that he wasn't up to the job. <clears throat> Her father shrugged and gave his own practiced smile. Some of my co-sponsors are wondering if we should shelve the idea for more study, but Tim has some polling that says retreating might do more harm than good. I'm not worried. Tim and the others have a plan to make this all come together. <clears throat> if you need me, her father held up his hand as the phone rang. The phone was always ringing. I'll catch this on my way to the office. He looked at Diana and gave her a tense smile. Your mother left a note for you on the counter. <clears throat> you can help by making sure you're ready when she comes to pick you up. I need everything to be perfect if we're going to turn this around. Then, before she could say anything, her father put, up, put the phone up to his ear 
and said, Larry, I'm glad you called, as he disappeared into the house. Diana hurried after him, but he didn't bother to look back. A moment later, Diana heard the front door slam behind him as <clears throat> he left before she could remind him she needed a ride. And when she read her stepmother's note, she knew she wasn't going to get one from her either. Diana, dear, I'll be home to pick you up at four. Wear the blue satin dress hanging in your closet and leave your hair down. Please be on time. Tonight is very important to all of us. Catherine. She stared at the letter. Be on time. Leave your hair down. Tonight is important. <clears throat> but clearly, driving Diana to school today is not. She turned the bracelet on her right arm and looked at her stepmother's words one more time, hearing each of them ringing in her head along with the other things she had said over the years. Keep your opinions to yourself, Diana. Because they might differ from what she was supposed to think, and that wasn't allowed. Remember that we're counting on you. Yes, they were. Diana headed back upstairs to the antique toy chest in the corner of her room. Quickly, she dumped the decorative pillows and the extra blankets stacked, stacked on top of the floor, then lifted the lid. She pulled out two bags. In the side pocket <clears throat> of one of the bags, she found a list she made for herself a few weeks ago and put it in her pocket. A quick glance at the clock told her she'd better get going or she was going to be late for the yearbook meeting. Yesterday, she'd moved the meeting to two hours earlier than originally scheduled. She doubted anyone would be thrilled that she asked them to change their plans simply to make them wait. <clears throat> Diana turned, took one last look in the mirror, saw what her family wanted her to be. What she had tried so hard to pretend to be. Perfect. Someone else expected to do the right thing and no one would ever suspect of doing something wrong. Good. Booting up her computer, she sent a quick message to Tim telling him that she was going to school now. Then Diana carefully packed up her bag and headed downstairs and out the door. Her father thought the only contribution he needed from her was for her to nod and smile and look flawless, like their family was supposed to be. She was determined to prove him wrong. Um... So it sounds pretty interesting. Um, we all know that I am a sucker for a whodunit. Um, it seems like a pretty easy read as well. Um, not too many, uh, not too much difficult language. Um, I definitely think that I'll probably finish one this one this week. Um, <clears throat> I know that we are leading up to the end of the year. Um, the final assignments, final. Um, papers and everything are being due or asked to be due. If you need any help with those, please reach out by email. Um, I'll be happy to respond as quickly as possible and get you whatever assistance I can. Um, I know seniors are asked to return their materials next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, whichever day your last name falls on that you've been asked to come. Uh, please make sure to remember to bring your library books to turn those back in. Um, we have quite a few out, and I'd like to get them in so we can get them cleaned and back on the shelf for next year. Uh, underclassmen, uh, you will also have a date that we are asking you to drop off your material. As of right now, that date has not been set yet. Uh, but as soon as it is, the uh, school will be sending out emails to let you know uh, what day you're expected to come. Again, email me if you need anything, even if you are looking for the next book to read. I'll be happy to make a suggestion. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Get outside. Um, help your mom and dad out or your grandma or whoever you live with. Um, play with your younger siblings. Uh, be kind to one another. Thanks, guys.